as I'm filming this, it is 2023. And if I told you that GTK 4 came out back in December of 2020, would you believe me? It honestly feels like it just started shipping, and unless you're using GNOME or something designed with GNOME in mind, most of the software you have is probably not even using GTK 4. I probably wouldn't believe me either, but it did happen. This is the release blog, December 2020. And within GTK 4, the latest stable version is 4.8.3, and the latest unstable version is 4.9.4. And considering how young GTK 4 is, while you know that GTK 5 is going to happen at some point in the future, you probably still think it's a really, really long way away. But it might not be as far as you initially think. So recently there was a blog post on the GTK development blog, updates from inside GTK. Now by itself a blog post isn't really that crazy. It's going over things that are being worked on like icon themes, languages, input, all of this fun stuff, but all of this in the context of GTK 4. That is until you get to the final section. GTK 5? I don't know how to read a single word with a question mark. We need to open a .90 branch to do things that would break the APIs that we have deprecated now, like the file chooser, and more general, the chooser dialog slash widget split. Some of us have been itching to start on that work, but there's still a lot of work to be done in 4.x, GTK list view fixes for example. With an eye towards the color management work that is planned to land in 4.12, the suggestion is to open a 4.90 development branch after 4.12. That would put it towards the end of this year and three years after the 4.0 release, which seems reasonable. So what does that actually mean for GTK 5? Much like GIMP for example, which does the exact same thing, the .90 branch is sort of your hyper development, your pre-release branch for the next major version of the application. So while you will update the stable version, so right now as I said, 4.8.3 and there's a newer version, 4.9.4. The difference between these two versions and any other versions in the stable releases aren't major fundamental changes. It's not redesigning how GTK is going to function. Whereas when you're on the .90 branch, that is where you start removing things that are deprecated, adding giant new features, and really designing what the future of the framework is going to be. As it currently stands on February 14th, 2023, there are 36 open issues tagged as GTK5, and an additional 8 that have already been closed. Some of these are closed because they're duplicates, some of them just won't fit in the project, and some of them actually fit in an older version of GTK and have already been fixed. But as for the open issues, there are things like refactoring the Wayland backend. We still carry a lot of confusion and suboptimal decisions from early GTK3 Wayland enablement in the backend, and it really should be rewritten to take advantage of the alignment between GDK API and Wayland concepts. Things like the text buffer 2GB limit, where if you go above the 2GB limit, it causes a crash, which is a problem and shouldn't be there. They also want to add an animation framework. Now this one was created four years ago, so this was initially going to be in GTK 4. No one had properly worked on it, it just wasn't anywhere near ready, so it got pushed back until GTK 5. And it's very likely, considering there is zero discussion here, it'll probably get pushed back to GTK 6 and also a further push towards lib add waiter. Consider removing the GTK theme name setting. We want to leave theme selection to platform libraries. We need a replacement API that those libraries can use to tell GTK about the style sheet to load and remove the preferred dark setting. We are planning to move to a setup where theme selection is controlled by platform libraries such as libgranite and libadwaiter, and we want to stop doing anything more than directly mapping from theme name to CSS file, or not even that. We'll see. And we cannot forget the drama from half a year ago. Consider dropping the X11 backend. It is not getting any better, and Wayland is widely available. 
I think one of the big things that people forgot about this is even if GTK 5 does go Wayland only, GTK 4 is pretty much only in use in GNOME. GTK 5 is likely going to follow the exact same trend. Pretty much everyone else is completely unaffected. Either you're using GTK 3 applications or you're using things in Qt, or maybe you have a lot of Electron applications installed which have nothing to do with GTK. So really, this would primarily lead to GNOME being Wayland only, which seems to be the direction they are actually going. But this led to a lot of really interesting discussion, and then a couple of months later, they did reach a conclusion. When we discussed this issue at a recent GTK planning call, the outcome was we should stop building X11 backend by default in GTK 5, but as long as we aren't doing any major GDK refactorings, keeping it around in its current state does not cost us much. But seeing as though GTK 5 development hasn't properly started yet, it's really hard to say whether any of those refactorings are going to happen. The important point is, don't be surprised if GTK 5 is only on Wayland. And also don't be surprised when GNOME goes Wayland only if GTK at the time isn't only supported on Wayland, the next version at that point probably will be. And all of this stuff is just what I found most exciting. There is a bunch of other stuff being considered that I'll leave you to go and check out on your own time. Now, even though it's just the development getting started, if you know anything about the history of GTK, this pace seems really, really quick. So GTK 2 released in 2002, GTK 3 in 2011, and GTK 4 in 2020. But how about we consider when GTK 3's 90 branch came out? 2017. Six years into the life of GTK 3, and three years before the release of GTK 4. So if we assume the same general development cycle, about three years until the release of the full ready stable version, GTK 4 is only going to have a life of about six or so years. This is three years less than the two prior versions of GTK. While that seems, and if it does happen, absolutely would be a really big speed increase, it's also not that surprising if you go back a little bit in the history of GTK. GNOME's GTK developers come up with a plan for GTK 4. At a GTK Hackfest this week, back in 2016, developers have come up with a new plan for delivering major releases of the GTK toolkit every two years, e.g. GTK 4, GTK 5, GTK 6. Now, as we have probably been able to tell in the years since then, this plan hasn't exactly been put into place. Because right now, we would be on GTK 6 and talking about GTK 7 being in development. Clearly, that hasn't exactly happened. But if the pacing is what I think it's going to be, we are in for a much quicker development cycle, just not that quick. Maybe something like that will be implemented into the future. Not for this release though. We're already three years into GTK 4 being out, so you can't exactly go back in time. As the development for GTK 5 starts, we're going to see a lot more discussions being had, a lot more features being announced, and a lot more arguments being had. Because it seems like you cannot go one even remotely popular thread without there being some giant argument where people completely disagree. And you know what? I'm gonna be there to see it all happen, and probably make a video about it. Also, when it does release, expect to have another version of GTK installed for that one random application that happens to be written in it. But until then, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you using any GTK 4 applications? Are you using GTK to begin with? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Barrow, paid link in the description down below. 
that's going to be it for me, and I'm out.